just a little bitty, bitty, uh, I wouldn't even call it a message. Boy, that's really overblown. I would just say a few thoughts on, on light tonight. But it's going to be a, a quick night, but it's going to be a great night. Uh, so be here tonight, if you will, 6 o'clock, right here, bring it on. And we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna test these guys out, these lights. We're going to go full blast. Okay, I got sunburned, you may see here. Like, because what I did was I came in the other day full blast, boom! I was in here for three minutes and got sunburned from these lights. So it's going to be, I mean, when they're full blown, it is like, hello! So uh, bring it on tonight. You may want to bring glasses, uh, you know, uh, bring a visor, you know, whatever it is to shield that light. Bring it on tonight. Okay. All right. Well, talking today about uh, about the Word of God being our light. And uh, obviously our prayer is this. Our prayer, uh, we talk a lot here about us being in the Word, you being in the Word every single day of your life, making that a priority, really making the, the Word of God the, the, the central theme of your life. Obviously the Lord, the Lord's Word, the central theme of your life, M- much like church. Much like this platform, when, when you go into churches, the, the, uh, the pulpit, the Word of God, is in the middle of the stage. You say, yeah, to kind of give symmetry to the stage or uh, so they can see the, the preacher better. No, re- really, the reason that started was to give centrality to the Word of God uh, among the assembly of His people. That's why the Word of God is in the center of the stage to represent the Word of God is at the very center of what we do. And praying that the the Word of God will be at the center, very center of your life, and you are in the Word of God every single day. And so we believe this about Scripture, as Scripture speaks of itself, that all Scripture is God-breathed, and meaning that these, when you read the Word of God, you are reading the very words of God, not just themes or concepts, but the very words of God are being expressed here. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, any servants of God in the room today? All right. So that you may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We believe that about the word of God, that it is the true breath of God. For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword and it penetrates to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Like, wow, that could be uncomfortable for the word, the word of God to, to judge the thoughts and attitudes of my heart. But we want that to happen. We want that to happen. We want to come before the Lord and say, Lord, speak to me through your word and show me the attitudes of my heart, the intentions of my heart that are from you through your word, and I'll change those around. It's also very practical. How can a young man keep his way pure? Young man, young woman, maybe an older man, older woman. How can we keep our way pure? By guarding it according to what? Your word. By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, with every part of my being, I seek you. And by the way, how do you seek the Lord? Have you ever said, I'm going to seek the Lord? Or has anybody ever said to you, I'm seeking the Lord? How, how is it that you seek the Lord? You get in the word of God. So th- that's, that's synonymous. When a person is truly seeking the Lord, they're saying, Lord, show me through your word what the truth is. I'm seeking you. I'm seeking your face. I'm seeking your word. Let me not wander from your commandments. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, Lord, I don't want there to be any distance between you and I. I don't want there to be any, anything between us. And so, Lord, I'm storing up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, if you would go to Psalm 119, go ahead, I'll wait for you to get there. Psalm 119, just right in the middle of your Bible right there. The longest chapter in the Psalms, the longest chapter in the word of God, Psalms 119. And Psalm 119 is a, uh, really a devotion. It's all about the word of God. So, if you want to, maybe some more homework tonight. Does anybody love homework? You're like, please, yes, give me homework. I, I need homework. (laughs) <laughs> right, come on now, D.C., M.U.S. math teacher right there. Homework, homework, homework. So read Psalm 119. It is long and it is beautiful. It's speaking about the Word of God. And so talking today about having a 119-watt light from Psalm 119 as it speaks about the Word. Now, obviously, when I go through all these verses in Psalm 119, it would take us, you know, six weeks, right? 
But let's just focus on Psalm 129 through Psalm 138. Is that okay with you? If we do that, okay. And let, let's see what this produces, what living in the light of the Word of God produces in our life. Number one would be obedience. Obedience to the Lord. Look at Psalm 119, 129. Your statutes are wonderful. Your statutes are wonderful. When's the last time you were filled with wonder and awe from the Word of God? A lot of times, even as believers, even as believers who may be more familiar with the Word of God than others, sometimes we just see, oh, yes, it's the Bible, it's the Word of God. You know, it's just kind of, you know, I have it around. It's on my dashboard. It's on my coffee table. I have it around, but we are not in it so much. It's just kind of become old hat, per se, for some of us. Well, when's the last time you really saw wonder in the Word of God? Your heart was filled with wonder. Because you are in the word of God. Your statutes are wonderful. And because your statutes, Lord, are wonderful, I'm going to obey them. It produces in my heart, because your word is wonderful, it produces within my heart obedience. And that's one of the ways that I show, Lord, that I believe your word is wonderful. Is because I want to obey your word. I see that it's wonderful. I, I see that it is that it is necessary, that it's really changing my heart, it's changing my attitude, it's changing my worldview, it's changing how I see things, it's bringing me peace, it's bringing me stability, it's recalibrating my thoughts. Lord, you are moving in my life through your word. I think it's wonderful. And therefore, Lord, because I know that these are your words, this is your love letter to me, I'm going to show you how wonderful I think you are and how wonderful your love letter is and your word is to me. I'm going to obey it. I'm going to obey it. So do you think the Bible is wonderful? Like this little man on the screen right here, Woo! do you think the word of God is wonderful when you're in it? Do you get lost in it? Do you want to go deeper in it? Do you think the word of God is wonderful? I would say, I would say, here's a way to tell once again, is are you actively obeying the word of God? Are you actively obeying the word of God? Are you in the word of God? Because, yes, Lord, I think it's wonderful. But more than that, just checking out the list, the checklist. Yes, I had my quiet time. I read a couple chapters or a few verses. More than that, you're obeying the word of God because it is wonderful. It's coming from the most wonderful one. And so if, and we believe it is, but if God is who he says he is, and if the Bible is what it says it is, you with me? And if the Bible is what it says it is, then the only real response that we have is to obey the word of God. So if we say, Lord, I believe who you are is holy, holy, holy. That everything the word of God says about you is true. That I have no doubt about your character and who you are. And Lord, I have no doubt that your word is the word of God. That it is actually your words to me. To live my life by. Then the only reasonable response is to obey the word of God. It would not be to leave it on the shelf. It would not just be to read it and for it to go one ear and out the other. It is to read it and obey the word of God. And therefore, you are saying to God through your actions, Lord, you're important to me. You are important to me. I read your words and I obey. But also, the word of God produces in, within your life illumination. And that's what light does, right? Illumination. Look at verse 30. The unfolding of your word gives light. The unfolding of your words give light. So when I'm in the word of God, when you're in the word of God, and it is unfolded to me, it's already been revealed, right? We have the revealed word of God right here. But as my understanding increases and it is unfolded to me, and understanding, it gives me life. That's what we talked about last week, right? You have a path that will lead you down a dark path. You have a path that will lead you down a lit path. The word of God brings light to your life and illuminates your path. And that's wonderful because as a believer, you move from being a child of darkness to a child of light. The Lord did that for you. Positionally speaking, he did that for you. He moved you from this kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. 
But now as we live our lives day to day, we are in the word of God, and it illuminates, it brings light to our path, and it shows us the way to go. Obviously, an iconic passage from Psalm 119 is this, Psalm 119, 105 and 6, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That would be a great song. Maybe we could ask Renee to sing that song sometime for us. It would be fantastic. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I've taken an oath and confirmed it. Have you taken that oath, by the way? Like, what do you mean? Like, is this some kind of ceremony? No, no, no. I'm talking about between you and the Lord. Have you taken an oath and confirmed that to the Lord? Like, what do you mean? Well, have you said to the Lord, Lord, I believe this is your word. I know your heart. I know your character. I know, I know that your word will never lead me. A properly interpreted word will never lead me in the wrong direction. So, Lord, I'm going to follow your word. I, I, want, to, I want to take an oath, make an oath to you, Lord, that, that I'll follow your word. I want to confirm that through my actions, by the way I live my life, that I will follow your righteous laws. Now, remember, as someone said before, the Lord has not given us a crystal ball, meaning that he's not showing us the future, 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 future of your life. What he's doing is he's giving you a light for your path. So when you step in obedience with the Lord, you read the word of God, you obey it, he lights up the next step, and the next step, and the next step of your life and spiritual growth. And then the word of God produces understanding. It produces understanding. In Psalm 119, verse 30, the rest of that verse, the unfolding of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. It gives understanding to the simple. So you don't have to be you know, some great intellect. You don't have to have the triple doctorate in theology to understand the word of God. He gives understanding to the simple. Now, that simple could be, you know, in intellect. It could be those who just don't know the way yet. It could be even for young people in in that particular way, in the simple. But the unfolding of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And isn't that great? to live your life and really actually understand what's going on. The Word of God will give you some keen insight on what's going on, not just in your life, but in the culture. It'll inform your politics. It'll it'll inform your church life. It'll inform your finances. It will inform every single area of your life because the Word of God gives you understanding to see things see, uh, things how they truly are. His Word needs explanation, though. His word needs explanation. So if he's going to help out the simple understand the word of God, his word needs his explanation. And that's a beautiful thing. He will help you out. The Lord will help you in understanding his word. So when you approach the word of God, you don't have to be like, well, you know, I don't don't understand all this. I mean, some of this is complicated. I don't understand all that. Well, just start with things that you do know that are point blank clear, right? Obey what you do understand. The Lord will give you understanding. And how to apply the word of God to your life. But his word needs explanation. And the best explanation of his word comes from his word. Are you saying like, Denise asked me, because uh, she double checked my slide for spelling and, uh, and grammar. And is this period, is this comp- all those kind of things. And she asked me, is this a word salad? And I was like, well, n- I, don't, I don't know. I changed it around a little bit. But his word comes, the, the best explanation of his word comes from his word. Meaning that. You've heard this before, that the best commentary on the Word of God is the Word of God itself. Meaning that, if I read a passage and I'm like, I don't know if I understand that. Well, you can look in your Bible right now. Probably in the middle of your Bible, in between these two columns, you have a, a line of verses. Right? Anybody, anybody's Bible have that right there? Just a line of verses right down the middle? Anybody? Am I here alone? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so so you have these two columns right here. So if I'm like, well, I'm not sure what this verse means, what, what I'll do is I'll look in the center passage right here. Or look at other scriptures that would shine light on this particular passage. It gives me a clear understanding because I want to make sure that I'm not interpreting something incorrectly and that the word of God is matching up with the word of God, right? Because I could read a verse out of context, but I'll read something over here that takes it point blank. It's not going to contradict itself. So the word of of God is his best commentary on itself. The Lord will help you understand his word. In fact, we're learning on Wednesday night about the Holy Spirit, right? 
And but when he, the spirit of truth comes, we're learning this, comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will guide you in all truth. So what's with the picture of the waterfalls? We may have seen this waterfall before. This is um, where Denise and I went to college, Toa Falls College, North Georgia, 90 miles north of Atlanta. This waterfall, the tallest waterfall east of the Mississippi, is on the campus. All right? So this is where we, we Denise and I kind of started uh, flirting and making googly eyes at each other, right? And, and so the, the point of all this, though, is this. When I was in college, I, was, uh, I used to take people on tours. I was an admissions counselor, right? So I would guide people around the campus, people who are interested in coming to college areas. Like, hey, how you doing? Let, let's walk around the campus. Let me show you around, right? And so I get different parts of the campus, and then I would say, this is the largest waterfall east of the Mississippi, right here on your college campus. You come out here, read the word of God. You give them d- different guides around the campus. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit himself, will do that very thing for you in your life. He'll guide you around the campus of the word of God. He'll just take you from stop to stop to stop to stop and show you the truth of the word of God. That's one of the things that he does. He leads us into, leads you into all truth. But when you're in the word of God also, it will produce in your, your life, in your heart, desire, even more so to be in the word of God. The more you're in the word of God, the more you want to be in the word of God. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands, Lord. The more you're in the word of God, the more you long for the word of God. That becomes the central part of your day. It becomes a non-negotiable. Lord, I want to be with you. I want you to speak to me through your word. So let me ask you this question. How would you rate your desire to spend time with the Lord through Bible study? You say, well, I, I pray a lot. That's awesome. But the question is, how would you rate your desire to spend time with the Lord through Bible study? What's your desire level in there? Are you running on empty there, Jackson Brown, on that? Are you kind of going more to the full on that? You have a full tank of desire in that? How would you rate your desire on that? And one way to increase your desire for the Word of God is to be in the Word. So maybe, you know, don't come to the Word of God and say, well, you know what? I guess I've got to read a chapter a day, a book a day. No. No. Hey, if you're just starting out, just read a verse. Just read a verse. And just meditate on that verse. Just think on that verse. Right. Like a piece of art. Like you go to a museum and muse over these art pieces and think about these art pieces in the museum. See the word of God as this is beautiful art. Really, no matter what your view on the word is right now, you may be coming to the Word of God saying, yeah, I don't know if I have the same view as you do, Elliot, believing all this is true. But hey, I'll play your pastor game, right? I'll get in the Word of God and, and, and you know meditate on a verse, think on a verse, and roll that around. I'm telling you, the Word of God will change your heart. It will change your mind. But examine the Scripture like you would, like you're in a museum, looking at this artwork from different angles, really trying to understand what the author is saying to you, the artist is saying to you. But you've heard the saying before, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. You ever heard of that before? It's the same thing in, with the Word of God. Those who are in the Word of God get richer and richer and richer because they mature more and more and more in their relationship with the Word of God, with, with, the, with the Lord himself. Those who are never in the Word of God, no matter what their excuse may be, if you're not in the Word of God, you're going to get poorer and poorer and poorer spiritually speaking. Because the way that you mature spiritually is you read the Word of God, you apply the Word of God, you obey the Word of God. Right? You know about the Lord by reading the Word. You get to know the Lord and who He is on an intimate level by applying the Word of God to your life and living that out in faith. It also produces attention. You being in the light of the word of God, it will produce attention in your life. In verse 32, turn to me, talking about the Lord's attention, to you. Turn to me and have mercy on me, Lord, as you always do to those who love your name. Have you ever wondered how to get God's attention? Here's an idea. Maybe we could all go outside on the lawn over there by the pavilion 
and just do a bunch of jumping jacks, you know? Or, or um, does anybody know a fireworks dealer? Maybe we could all go out and fire up bottle rockets to the Lord, and you're like, hey, we're down here. Can, can you please give me your attention? Or maybe send up a space shuttle. I, I'm not really sure. Big spotlight. How do you get the Lord's attention? I would say this. Showing the Lord that he is important to you by looking into his word and applying his word to your life. That gets the Lord's attention. That gets the Lord's attention. Turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil will flee from you. But come near to God and he will come near to you. Get in the word of God. Let him know, Lord, our relationship, my relationship with you is important to me. I'm going to show you it's important to me by carving out time in my day, just like you do with video games and TV and work and your academics and all the other things, your hobbies and all the other things that you do. You intentionally carve out time, time with your wife. You carve out time intentionally because simply they're just important to you. So, Lord, I'm going to show you the same thing. I'm going to intentionally carve out time in my day to spend time with you. I'm going to come near you through the word. And you will come near me. So the Lord comes near to people who love his name. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to love God's name? In the Old Testament, the Lord was just known by the name, right? Not a name, the name. Like the name. But do you think it's possible to love God's name without loving his word? I mean, do you think it's possible to say, Lord, I truly love you. I think you're wonderful. I think you're holy, holy, holy. I want to have a relationship with you. But Lord, ah, your word, not so much. Not so much. Or I don't really know if I can trust what you're saying. But I sure love your name. You know? Now, wouldn't that be awesome if somebody came up to you and said, you know what? I love you so much. I I'm performing a wedding this Saturday for a former college student. Right? And, and wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be romantic? Wonderful, even. If on the, the marriage altar, right, maybe I'll work this into the, into the vows. I don't know. But if the, the groom were to say to the bride, I love you so much, I just don't trust you. I just don't trust anything you say. But don't worry, honey. I love you so much. The honeymoon's on. I got the ring in my pocket. The best man has the ring. I love you so much. I don't believe anything that you say. I don't really want to spend time with you. I want to know right down the ceremony. We're going to spend time together, but after that, maybe not so much, right? We'll see you here and there, you know, but that's just how it is. And then would you expect the bride to say, oh, sweet dumpling, I, I love you so much. And, oh, yes, let us go on with this. I would expect this bride to be like, hmm, uh, keep the ring, keep your honeymoon. I'll just go find somebody who really loves me. Now, let me just ask you the question, why in the world do you think anything is different in our relationship with God when we say those things to God? When we say to him, oh, God, I love your name so much, I'm, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No time for you. No time in your word. Forget your love letter, Lord. I'm just going to do my thing. But I sure love you, Lord. You go, hmm, I, I don't know. There's a little disconnect there. So remember, we're talking about living in the light, what it produces. It also produces direction for your life in verse 133. Direct my footsteps. Wouldn't that be nice? If you actually had the Lord directing your footsteps, when you run into a problem, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, and you had the Lord through his word to direct his footsteps. Well, you say, well, I, I prefer to pray. I don't get in the word too much, some may say for the Lord to direct my footsteps. I just pray, and the Lord just guides me in his direction, right? That, that sounds uh, kind of pseudo-spiritual. Sounds kind of pseudo-spiritual. The danger in that is when you pray to the Lord, have you ever asked this question to yourself before? Lord, was that me talking when you pray, or was that you? You ever, you ever ask yourself that question? Lord, was that me, or was that you? Well, here's how you figure things out. 
if that was me or that was you, you go to the Word. You go to the Word. Because when I pray, sometimes, you know, I may hear a voice that wasn't the Lord. Have you ever been there before? I mean, are you going to tell me that every time you pray, it's always 100% the Lord? That you're hearing back? I mean, sometimes you can make a mistake. I'm just saying when you go to the Word of God, well, here it is right here. You have the mind, the thought of the Word of the Lord right here. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're doing yourself no favor when you stay away from the Lord of God, from the Word of God. You're putting yourself in a directional disadvantage. Direct my footsteps according to your word. According to your word, direct my steps. So when you don't know where to go, go to the word of God for direction. Because once again, direct my footsteps according to your word. Go to the word for direction. And then it gives you freedom. For those who are bound up in your life right now, the word of God will bring freedom to your life. It will produce that. The rest of the verse, direct my footsteps according to your word. And then it says, let no sin rule over me. Let no sin rule over me. The word of God, when you apply the word of God to your life, it will free you up from sin. It will free you up. For those of you who are in bondage in sin today, and you can't figure out how to get out, and you've tried every 37-step program or everything you've tried to do to get out of that, go to the Word of God. It will free you up. It will free you from sin. Psalm 119, 32. You see how we're, we're kind of looking into the Word to commentary, put a commentary on the Word, to understand the Word. Truth reveals truth. So we're looking at Psalm 119.32. It says this, I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. The world will not tell you that. The world will tell you, no, 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 no. You run in the path of your own commands because nobody tells you what to do and nobody has authority over you. God does it. The word of God does it. No one has authority over you. And when you come to that place, the world will tell you that no one has authority over you and no one tells you what to do and you don't yield to anyone, then your heart is free. But you see what the Word of God says. I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. And there you see the decision and the way to live your life, quite frankly. Which do you believe is true? Which, which do you believe is telling you the truth? The world or the Word? Well, hopefully you're a person who, that believes that, Lord, you're telling me the truth. Your word is telling me the truth. Therefore, I will submit, submit myself to your word, which ultimately is submitting myself to you, which you will not lead me in any wrong direction. And also bring you freedom. Wait, 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 wait. Typo? Typo? Oh, no, no. It's number eight as well. It will bring you freedom. Look in verse 34. Redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Human oppression. What is it talking about right here? Redeem me, Lord, from human oppression that I may o obey your precepts. What are you getting freed up right there? Freedom from man's approval. That I may obey your, your precepts. Redeem me from human oppression. I just want to say that many of us, and I would say almost all of us at one point or the other, You've got to fight against this all the time about you living your life to please the Lord or you living your life to please other people. Because some of us have not re reached the maturity in our spiritual life to live to please the Lord alone because we're afraid we're going to offend other people. And we're afraid that people are going to come to us and say, you know what, I don't think you should live your life that way. Or we feel like we're going to disappoint people. In essence, we're, we've turned into people pleasers, many of us, and not God pleasers. The Word of God will free you up from that. Like, how would the Word of God free me up from me being under the slavery 
or what other people think about you. High schoolers, listen up. Middle schoolers, listen up. Hey, college students, listen up. Hey, young moms and parents, listen up. Hey, older adults, listen up. This affects us all. Right? The Word of God frees us up to live for the Lord because when you believe, Lord, I believe you are who you say you are. Lord, I believe your Word is what it claims to be. Lord, this is my authority, the Word. It's my sole authority, the rule that I live my life by. When you understand the truth in the Word of God, that's what you stand upon. Your, your thinking will start to change something like this. Well, this is what the Word of God says about this topic or about my life. So I believe the Word of God is true. I'm going to stand on this because I know it's true. Lord, I want to please you because you're the one ultimately I want to please. So therefore, you don't have to put your finger in the wind and say, well, how am I going to live today? What am I going to think about this topic? Who am I going to live for today? Who am I going to please today? Th those things are settled in your life, hopefully, as a believer. Those things have been settled in your life when you said yes to Jesus Christ. You're saying, Lord, I'm following you. I'm following you. Hopefully that foundational decision has been made. And I'm not just talking about your salvation. I'm talking about how you live your life day by day and what authority is over your life. That we would be freed up from human approval. Can I get an amen on that? That we would just be freed up from that and say, Lord, I'm following you. And then favor. Favor in verse 135. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. This comes from Numbers 6, 23 to 26. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless them, the Israelites, and say to them, and this, it'll become familiar to you what he says. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you which means the favor of the Lord, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And give you peace. Well, how do I receive the favor of the Lord? Well, I'll tell you how not to receive the favor of your Lord, of the Lord. Probably just like in your own household. When you were raising your kids, or you, many of you are raising your kids right now, right? That you always love your kids whether they're obedient to you or not. But when Junior Mint has been disobedient to you and he comes and asks for a 20, you're like, I don't think so, bro. Right? You're not getting any favor from me right now because you are living in disobedience to me right now. You're defying me to my face. Why am I going to reward you, reward you with a $20 bill right now? Oh, no, no, it's not going to happen. I, say, I think the same kind of thing with the Lord. If we want the Lord's favor in our life, we say once again, Lord, I love you, I trust you, I believe your word, I'm going to obey your word. And his face and his favor shines upon you. Also in an indirect way, when you live your life according to the word, it is a much better satisfying life. You keep yourself out of a lot of trouble by living according to the word of God, by having the favor of the Lord on your life. But it will also produce grief, being in the Word of God, living according to the light will also bring grief into your life. Well, I wasn't expecting that one. Grief, like what do you mean? Well, streams of tears in 136. Streams of tears flow from my eyes. Why is the psalmist so upset? For your law is not obeyed. For your law is not obeyed. Maybe you look across the city like Jesus did in his city. And his heart was broken. Tears ran down his face because his people weren't following him. Maybe you look across Memphis. And tears run down your eyes and your heart is broken. Not just for the city, the city like the city limits of Memphis, but the people in Memphis. They don't know the Lord. They're not walking with the Lord. And their life could be so much different if they did. And your heart is broken for that. Maybe that goes to a national level for, level for you. And tears fall down your cheeks, roll down your cheeks. Because our country is moving away from the Lord. 
and our culture declines is a direct result of that. And maybe even in your own house, maybe you have family members that are far away from the Lord, and every night your heart breaks because they're far away from the Lord, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, Lord, please bring them back to you. Pray for them to see the light, to see the truth, and for them to turn to you. It'll bring you grief coming in the word of God. But in 137 and 138, we're assured this, that you are righteous, Lord. You are righteous and your laws are right. If you're looking for the truth to follow, not a truth, not your truth, but the, the truth to follow, then you're in the right place in the word of God. You are righteous, Lord, and your laws are right. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. And if you follow them, you'll be in wonderful shape. The Lord will guide you where you need to go. But all this starts, by the way, from you saying yes to Jesus, the spirit of God moving in your life, He draws you to him. He shows you the reality of your condition, that you're a sinful sinful person separated from him. But you can turn away from those sins and place your faith in Jesus Christ. Alone for salvation. You don't need works. You don't need to give a bunch of money. You know, you don't need church attendance, all that kind of stuff. Faith in Jesus Christ saves you. When that happens, when you say yes to Jesus Christ, Then he transfers you, like we talked about at the very beginning, he transfers you from the kingdom of darkness over to the kingdom of light. And things are just so much brighter and truthful in the light. That's the very first step. And then as a believer, we'd like, Lord, feed me through your word. I'll obey. So I want to issue you a challenge. Lord saying to you right now, you know what? You're just playing this game. You've never been saved before. You've never truly given your life to me. Jesus is saying, and today I want to encourage you to do that today. If you're a believer in the room, and you really can't remember the last time you've had the desire or even been in the word of God, you mean you bring the, the word to the church, it's kind of just for show, you know. And you're not really in the Word of God. You're not obeying the Word of God. I want to challenge you to get into the Word of God. It'll absolutely change. You'll be a much better husband, a much better wife. You'll be a better parent, a better grandparent. You'll be a better church member. You'll be more useful in the hands of God for Him to really work through you. And you'll just be closer to God. And that's the best way to live your life. So let's pray for each other in that way. Lord, when we get distracted, we feel like we don't have time. When we get right down to it, we just don't feel like being in your word is that important. Lord, show us the reality. Show us the reality of our need for you, our need to be in your word. Lord, so you can calm our soul, so you can just calm us down, so you can recalibrate our thinking our minds and our hearts with you, Lord, that you can show us truth and give us understanding that we would not have and could not have unless we were in the word. So, Lord, right now we're praying for those who need a relationship with you, need to get put by you on the path to heaven. And then, Lord, for those who need to get in the word, get serious about their walk with you, to live in the light. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me, please?